MVHR. Design it too late at your peril. It's not a title I chose, but it is a topic that I chose, and that's because we've been retrofitting MVHR for nearly 10 years, which means we know all about the perils. And what I can tell you is that unless yours is designed before you finalise the interior layout of your property, uh, particularly the size and the location of the plant room, and also before you specify your uh, internal joists and structural members, yours is going to be a retrofit, even if it is a new property with no roof. And when it's a retrofit, it's more difficult and more expensive. So I'm going to try and explain uh, why it's beneficial to design it earlier rather than later. Is an impressive system in a 300, uh, sorry, a 400 square meter property over three floors. It's got a light commercial unit in the basement capable of 900 meters cubed an hour. Uh, but the main thing is it's got these risers that run through the entire property, through all the floors. And that means we can have the unit in the basement and we can vent out to atmosphere through the roof. Ideal both ways. It's a fire safe. Uh, masonry riser that runs through all the floors that was created for us very kindly by the uh, main contractor and, uh, and the architect. At each floor we branch into that we come out with a resettable fire damper so there are no uh, issues if, if it should accidentally go off and that runs into a heated cooler battery there or coil that, one on each floor and that's going to connect to an air source heat pump a reversible one so this property will get independent heating and cooling on each floor via the MVHR. On each floor there's a distribution man manifold, one of them supplies, one of them extracts, um, and they, they are 300 millimetres deep. So we were fortunate in that we could hide all of that inside the, uh, the floor build-up. So with that system in mind, uh, here are the differences had we planned it later. So at the moment we've got um, one system that will ventilate the whole building. It's a large system, but it's only one system. Plan B would have been three systems, effectively uh, working out where to retrofit a system on each floor of the property. Originally they were going to have uh, 200 millimeter solid timber joists. Uh, fortunately, we managed to talk them into 300 millimeter easy joists at 600 centers which means all of the plant is hidden inside the floor void. So this pro the planned early project has got normal ceiling heights. In fact, the whole house was raised by 150 millimetres to accommodate the ducting in those extra joists. Had we come to the party late, the only way uh, to get the system in would have been to reduce the ceiling height by creating and putting the suspended ceiling in in order to uh, create a service void to get the ducting through. Uh, nobody wants lowered ceiling heights if they can help it. The single system uh, has got minimal air resistance, about 200 pascals on the whole system, which is very impressive. The most optimistic estimate, had we gone down to three units, one on each floor, would have been 50% more air resistance, 50% more work, and more than 50% more electricity. So suboptimal. A single system located in the basement is very convenient. There's loads of space. We can avoid tight bends, nice sweeping bends, low, it reduces the system pressure and the workload that the machine's got to do. Had we planned it late after those, uh, the, the layout and the structural members had been finalized, we'd have been looking for three inconvenient plant rooms. So potentially cupboards off bedrooms, um, airing cupboards and other spaces that you would obviously rather have for, for storage. Sometimes there's no option. Quite common, we have uh, quite a common scenario is we have to drop the ceiling in by potentially 300 millimeters in some rooms in order to get all of the plants in one ceiling and then drop all of the other ceilings by about 150 millimeters. Either way, you're uh, retrospectively changing the uh, property to accommodate something that could have been designed in earlier. So with the single system in the basement, there's no motor breakout noise. The ducting is very efficient, very little work for it all to do. It's going to run silently. Had we had to put three units inside the property on different floors, potentially near to an exterior wall, uh, normally quite close to a bedroom or some other noise sensitive area, you know, we've got potential breakout noise to deal with. That's fan motor noise. 
This system, relatively speaking, is going to be a simple install, whereas three systems obviously is a lot more complicated. There's more risk of uh, communication errors, problems, uh, and risk is uh, generally not, not ideal. Um, also, finally, uh, the, the single system only needs one control system. So on this case, it's going to be an app on the telephone. Uh, whereas if you have three units in there, that's either three different apps to control different floors of the house, or it's a, some kind of building management system. Either way, it's, uh, it's not ideal. So here are some systems that were installed uh, late in the day, effectively retrofitted into tight, tight areas that uh, are might call suboptimal. This one's been squashed into a roof, uh, roof space. Um, there's not a lot of room for servicing in front of here. Potentially prone to getting hot during the summer because the, obviously it's the top of the building and it's close to the, the roof. So any deficiencies in the roof insulation, this space could get very hot. That heat will be transferred into the ducting and means that the property could, could contribute towards overheating. Um, all of these bends create static pressure and air turbulence. It means the motor's got to do more work, which means it's going to be noisier and use more electricity. This system, uh, believe it or not, was installed in a three million pound footballer's palace uh, with a swimming pool on the second floor. So despite the budget spent everywhere else, they've had the cheapest system that money can buy and it's probably failed now because this photo is a couple of years old. Um, these ones on the right here, it looks at first glance quite neat. But uh, imagine how difficult it is it's going to be to vacuum the filters in that far unit there every three months. Not so bad for this one, which is close to the access hatch, but uh, someone's got to crawl down that crawl space to get to that machine with a vacuum cleaner to vacuum the filters. So in terms of uh, acoustics, the single system with large ducting, sweeping bends, uh, designed properly and designed early, is going to run like a purring kitten. We've got to put a machine on each floor, then, uh, and potentially with more ducting in order to accommodate awkward areas. You, know, you, you, <laughs> you can go from a purring kitten to three roaring lions, which is not something anybody wants. Now, it's not always that bad, but generally speaking, when you're retrofitting, you've got more uh, challenges to overcome and more acoustic issues to uh, to deal with. So you want one of these per in kitten rather than three of those. Capital outlay, now this is the interesting bit. Um, so the single system, we've got one large machine. Uh, it's a bit dearer than the smaller machines, but the cost difference isn't that fast. Three smaller machines is going to be at least double the cost. So on this occasion, we're looking at an uplift of about four and a half thousand pounds. That's unnecessary uplift. We've got one plant installed to worry about with the single system, whereas we've got three plant installs to deal with with the uh, with three systems. Potentially more awkward because there's tight spaces. Either way, that's going to be at least double the cost. For this one, we've got two exterior penetrations uh, going through the roof, probably a couple of hours for the roofer to do when he's tiling it. With three systems in the same property, we've got six penetrations. So that's going to be two through the roof and probably four core drilled through the exterior wall. Uh, now that leads to other problems with atmosphere ducting being around about 180 millimeter diameter, 150. It's a big old pipe to try and hide, potentially means even lower ceilings. Um, you've got exterior grills, which aren't always the most attractive things to see on the facade of the house. If they're very close to a neighbour, you've got potential acoustic issues, particularly from the exhaust. Um, so again, suboptimal and more money. We've got one lot of services to worry about with a single system. That's one condensate drain for the water that it collects, one switch fused outlet for the, uh, for the power, one remote control cable for the wall-mounted controller that goes upstairs and the boost switch cabling. 
all of that is tripled uh, if we go down the, uh, the latter route where we've got a system on each floor. More money. Obviously, there's a small uplift in the cost of the build for the single system because they've gone from 200 millimeter solid joist to 300 millimeter posi joist. But that's a relatively small uplift, all things considered, and that's going to assist other trades as well as the ventilation contractor. So, uh, all things considered, it's a definitely a wise, a wise move. Posit joists are the uh, the open web joists where you can just feed all your pipes through. Obviously, you don't have that uplift um, on the other option, but what you do need to do is to lower the ceilings. That means you need suspended ceiling brackets and, and all of the cost that goes an associated cost that goes in with lowering the ceilings. So just as an example, if you had a thousand square foot apartment on a single floor and you had to drop uh, with an eight foot ceiling, you've got about 8,000 square uh, cubic meters of property. If you've got to drop those ceilings by uh, 150 millimeters or six inches, all of a sudden you now only got 7,500 cubic feet of property. You've lost six, over 6% 6 of your internal space. You're in a prime location where they measure cubic volume rather than square meterage of floor area. Losing 6% of, uh, of the value is a considerable uh, chunk of money. Okay, running costs. We estimate the large unit is gonna run at 200 watts maximum less when they're on holiday or at their away. Um, optimistically, three units in the same property is going to use 340 watts, potentially more than that if, if it's a difficult retrofit. So at least 70% more electricity, most likely something closer to 100% more electricity. And that's not that's for the life of the building, so 50 years. Uh, the system planned early, it's only got one unit to service. Nice and easy in the basement, doors on it. Quick job. We've got three units to service on the, the, the same project had it been planned late. So that's at least double the cost. On the planned early project, we've got three filters in there. They need vacuuming every three months and replacing every 12 months. Um, the reason there are three filters, incidentally, is because this is an airflow adroit. It's got um, it's got two filters on the air intake. It's got a sacrificial G4 debris filter that protects an expensive F7 fine particle filter, and that's why it produces such fantastic air quality. However, had we gone down the three option, uh, three unit option, because we were invited to the party late, we're looking at nine filters there. So that's again more of that. And then finally, these things are generally very reliable, particularly the, uh, the premium brands. But either way, a single unit has got seven sensors, two motors, one uh, summer bypass actuator, uh, which is the only other moving part in the machine. And it's got one PC motherboard. Uh, if anything's going to fail, it's going to be something on that list. And the reason there are seven sensors is because this unit monitors temperature, humidity uh, and CO2. Had we gone down uh, three units, obviously we got three times everything, and that's three times more risk. So one sensor fails, you've got a call out from an engineer um, costing several hundred pounds. So the less risk you've got with this system, the better. And then finally, the environmental impact. Um, so assuming that the first unit, the single unit, is going to consume 200 watts, indefinitely, whereas three systems are going to consume 340 watts indefinitely, and based on a 50 year life of the property, at uh, about a quarter of a kilo per kilowatt hour consumption, your know, single machine is going to use, uh, it's going to emit 22 tonnes of CO2, probably less because it's not always going to be at 200 watts, but over the life of the property, you've got 22 tonnes of carbon emissions there you got 38 tons, so nearly double. And that's on an optimistic uh, consumption figure as well. And finally, the manufacture and distribution uh, life cycle costs of a single machine are a third what they are of three machines. So less shipping, less manufacture, less raw materials. So environmentally, you're better off with one as well. 
So in summary, design it too late at your peril. If this project is planned early, it's going to be more efficient, less expensive and less risky. Plan it late, uh, which is after you finalise the interior layout of the building and particularly the plant room and size and location. It's going to be less expensive, less efficient, more expensive and more risky. So all things considered, you're better off calling us sooner rather than later. Hope that's been useful. Happy to answer questions.